ठीक है तो जो नेक्स्ट एक्ट है वो आयरलैंड से आया है ठीक है आयरलैंड हमको दो चीजें पता है इस चीज के बारे में एक तो बिस्की जो हम आयरिश स्कॉच जो भी पीते रहते हैं और दूसरा जो क्रिकेट बोला <laughs> उनका क्रिकेट टीम क्या ही है भाई यार क्या भाई उनका ना के बराबर ही है पर हमको इतना पता है कि उनका जो फ्लैग है हमसे थोड़ा मिलता है भाई तो सपोर्ट ऐसे करना कि हमारे देश का ही हो ठीक है ठीक है Actually, I should take a moment just to ask the group, what language would you prefer me to continue in? Tamil, Kannada, Hindi, Telugu. Any consensus? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> so I'll speak in a language that's probably common to us all. English is that fine? Yeah. Is that agreeable to you? Okay. Very good. A uh, fun fact about me, Vishal, our host for the evening. I'm his stunt double. <laughs> true. All of this is true. A uh, curious sensation standing here. I feel like I'm trapped inside the brake light of an auto rickshaw. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, the great thing about coming from Ireland to perform in Bangalore is that if I go down badly, I don't have to worry about a comeback. <laughs> Good for me. I was actually due to perform here last Friday, but it was cancelled due to low ticket sales. How can that be in a country of 1.4? <laughs> Anyone explain that to me? That there weren't sufficient ticket sales to justify the show on International Women's Day, also known as International Trigger a Man Day. <laughs> Um, it's great to be here, I have to say. I love the fast pace of life in Bangalore. It's intoxicating. I was uh, sitting in a cab the other day, and I looked up on Google Maps, distance to hotel. It said 900 meters. It said time to hotel, 43 minutes. <laughs> That's what I'm dealing with. I had the wonderful pleasure of uh, visiting Bandipur National Park. My colleague was telling me to look out for tigers. I did look out for tigers, but the only tiger I saw was two monkeys dressed up as a tiger. When I got off the safari bus, I saw them changing out of their costume. You are my natural constituency in this audience. I've lost everybody else. It's just you and I. This could become the comedy version of a lap dance. <laughs> or I perform just for you. And you put 100 rupees down the top. <laughs> How is this crowd like that dynamic? Is there an appetite for that? Actually, if there is an appetite for smut and filth, I'm not your man. Think of me as the comedy version of scented candles. But, uh, no, it is good to be here. Uh, True story, I was in a clothing store the other day looking for a pair of trousers. And the gentleman asked me for my measurements. I said, 36 waist, 36 inside leg. <laughs> he said, I can help you out on the waist. <laughs> I can't help you out on the leg. And that's your fault. Your DNA, what's going on here? What's going on? Um, you might ask, what am I doing here? Do I work for a tech firm and I'm over for a couple of days just to conduct a white glove inspection? No, no I'm not, no I'm not. Think of my presence here as reverse colonialism. <laughs> now let me explain that to you. I'm from Ireland, as you know. Uh, I heard uh, in Michelle's intro, whiskey. <laughs> it's interesting to me the cultural cliches that we trade in. I've been reduced to a short. <laughs> but I just mentioned earlier that you're shorter than me, so I won't go there. Uh, where was I? Yes, reverse colonialism. In Ireland, our Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, Leo Varadkar. Leo Varadkar. He's of Indian heritage. 
In Scotland, the first minister there is Hamza Yusuf. He's a Pakistani heritage. In Britain, as you know, the fish is <laughs> He is of Indian heritage. So I am here to challenge Nehandra Das Modi <laughs> in the upcoming elections. I'll be going under the slogan, the White Baba of Ganga. <laughs> Look out for the posters, they'll be nationwide. nationwide. And when I win, and I will win, <laughs> I will win, my first priority is to solve the water crisis here in Karnataka. <laughs> I'm going to go to, yes, thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to stop taking 30 minute showers, and I'm going to start taking 45 minute showers. <laughs> I'm going to go to Cork on the day after I win, and I'm going to do a <coughs> rain dance. <laughs> and that's going to bring thunderous storms and flood this place. You'll be delighted with me. It's going to be wonderful. Um, you don't know me, but I'd like to share some recent reviews and performances of mine. Uh, one reviewer, these are all available on Google, said, in danger of becoming an icon. <laughs> <laughs> Second reviewer said, mostly arrogant, for occasional flashes of modesty. <laughs> and a third reviewer said, unputdownable, which is normally reserved for books. But what happened on the night was, I was crowd surfed back to my seat. <laughs> I'm fully expecting that to happen tonight. Fully expecting that. But I got into comedy fairly recently for uh, three reasons. Reason number one, uh, this centers around the Brandolini principle. You may be familiar with it. He's a software developer. But this principle is, states rather, that the energy required to resist bullshit <laughs> is greater than the energy required to produce it. <laughs> Which is very handy when you're a comedian. And the second reason I got into comedy was I found myself spending a lot of time looking at kitchen finishes on Pinterest. <laughs> And then I realized I'm an adult man with testosterone. <laughs> and there's more to life. And the third reason I got into comedy, well, it's a bastion of free speech. It affords a man to say things that can't ordinarily be said. For example, I was at work today talking to a client. And I said, now listen, to accelerate AI, you've got to do two things. You've got to migrate to the cloud and enhance your ERP. But here, the Ministry for Comedy, in Cora Mangala, I can say things like, the Chinese are sneaky. <laughs> Which you accept wholly and completely. Not a jot of resistance. Um, I do know, and I know my, my time is almost up here, that the theme of the night is toxic love. And I was raised in the 1970s and 80s. It was, how can I put it, a cold house in Ireland. People weren't emotionally evolved, seriously. Uh, I remember my father, he sat me down when I was a teenager, 13 or 14, give me that talk about the birds and the bees. And his opening line was, a Patrick, he said, women, although slow and dangerous behind the wheel of a car, <laughs> I finally reached this man here. It's not that I've been misogynist, it's that I haven't been misogynist enough. <laughs> he said to me, now Patrick, women, although slow and dangerous behind the wheel of a car, can still serve a purpose. I said that for comic effect. It had an effect. Not necessarily comic. <laughs> what I'm doing here is I'm conducting a social experiment. I'm digging myself into a deep hole. And by the eighth minute, I'm going to rise phoenix-like. <laughs> I'm going to carry back to the back. But uh, no, it was a, how can I say, emotionally stunted the Irish back in the 1970s and 80s, not in touch with their families. But uh, I think for me, as I was raised in this environment, that Me Too movement, that was a good off for me. I look back to a time prior to Me Too as a kind of golden age. <laughs> this man's loving it. No, really. God be with the days when a man like me could roam the office floor with hands like an octopus. 
Those days are over. Those days are over. You've just experienced me, my time is up. You've just experienced me in the spoken word. I'm also available in the written word. I have a number of books available. My first is uh, an autobiography. It's called Beyond the Cleavage. <laughs> and in it, I set out what it's like to be objectified as a man. It's not pretty. Uh, second book, it's more of a socio-political treatise. It's called The Sexual Case for Housing Reform. <laughs> how the housing crisis impacts a person's intimate life. No housing crisis in Bangalore? <laughs> that one goes down really well in Dublin. <laughs> and the last book, you should check it out, it's called Too Far East is West. This man is fully on board. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm getting the sense that I could only ever appeal to a niche audience in Bangalore. <laughs> Um, too Far East is West, and that's about going around in circles, which is what I'm doing right now. My time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you.